I think that's great. I have a question. I mean, one thing I would say is this is also a camp. I mean, the kids who come to this camp, uh, they're really invested in it. So. It's much easier, I think, because they want to do the art. They, you know, they're right there. They want to learn and they want to contribute and they like my response. I can see how it would be different in a, you know, because I've, you know, teach public schools and stuff too. Then you're going to have a high, different levels of involvement. And then I think being online would be harder to pull those kids in. But on the level that these kids are, are you know, most of them are middle school, their level of investment is very easy. I'm finding some, some things about it I really, really like. Like the, the breakout rooms are awesome. It means I can go into a private space with one student and we can look at the work together and talk about stuff without interrupting the rest of the class. And, and it's more private for them too. It might be easier for them to, to talk about stuff. Also, I usually start each class with a, like an online game called Kahoot, which the kids all know, they all love it. It kind of you know, relaxes everybody. It's always like art related questions. So trying to figure out how to use the technology in the class has been great also. Was I concerned about teaching a live, something I would normally do live on a Zoom call? And I mean, of course, yes, I was concerned at first. Um, I'm really a hands-on person and I'm all about uh, introducing studi students to a bunch of different materials. And so it felt like a direct affront <laughs> to my style of uh, teaching. I. I guess I quickly found out that it's it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be um, as far as learning about the technology. Now, as far as creating a curriculum, what I realized is I just had to take my thinking about, um, okay, I'm always about, try this material, try this material, really hands-on. And it's more like I had to think like, try this concept, try this technique. I think the technology of being able to have uh, a dual screen for myself where I have myself in interview mode and then I also have my phone propped up above so the kids can see or the students can see what I'm working on. I think that's been very helpful. So it's not as challenging as I thought it would be. It's actually gone better than I thought. So this is like some crazy hat thing I made. But this is all tissue paper. All this, this is tissue. I wonder if for you, is there something that you could make that then you can just work on the technique of creating this phone? Like, is there something where, um, is there a mask piece you could make? Is there a, a, a staff, something? Is there is there any kind of object that, that you would enjoy making that's in the essence of your, your story. You look like the Pope. Now let me look at it close. The new Pope, 2020. <laughs> the purple Pope. So set it down some place to uh, dry. The best place to dry, three inches away from me. Oh, you're painting the side? Ben, that's great, dude. Hold it up a little bit. Perfect. Terrible. No, it's really good. Perfect. <laughs> you can't really see the green. In person, it looks a lot more green. But you often have to go through many ideas to get to the final result. And and that's part of the process, and it's, and it's good and important to actually come up with bad ideas. Or to just like, here's the first thought in my head and I'm just getting it out. I'm getting it out, I'm gonna write it down. Cause you just don't know where it might lead you next. I um, noticed that the kids are engaged and all of them are keeping up, asking questions. They're very present in the classroom for the most part, that's been my experience. And that tells me that it is of value to them. 
you know, art making is a lot of just work time where the kids are working. They don't want to hear me talking all the time. I'm not always demoing something. So, um, and it's weird just sitting here looking at a screen. <laughs> so I've actually started reading uh, stories. Like today I was reading um, spooky campfire stories and they love it. They love it. Um, and then sometimes I play music. Arts education is super organized. They had us uh, create our materials list. We sent it to them. They got all the supplies. They bagged it all up for each family. And then the families went to Minnesota Street and picked up the supplies for the kids um, to have. Yeah, so on the, the la on the Friday, the last half hour, they invite the parents to come in and the kids can talk about the work and I can talk about what the, the project was. I can't. Uh, do huge paintings. Usually in the summers we do eight by eight or six by six foot paintings. We're kind of restricted to what we can do. Um, we're restricted to, um, I don't feel safe doing spray painting, you know, or certain things. But we've done, you know, a lot of my regular things. They've, they're just, you know, it's great. Um, you know, just kind of, I like to look at the whole classroom. So I'm usually on, you know, gallery view and but then if I'm trying to make a point or trying to look at a kid's art, then I'll do a close up and we'll talk and back and forth. But in some kind of weird way, when I'm actually looking uh, in the gallery view, it's almost like I'm in the classroom. So I'm just kind of looking around. And if I do a demonstration, I can get their attention and do it just like I would in the classroom. The kids, the parents and myself weren't sure how this was going to go. Um, overall, I think it's gone incredibly smooth and I think the parents, the kids and myself are, you know, really incredibly happy. A spoonful of Mod Podge makes everything stick together. I, I'm not, I, I am not surprised at the students' adeptness. I'm not. I, I think their generation, Generation Z, is just they're just a bunch of smart people. They have grown up in a world very different than we grew up in or that I grew up in. The challenges that they're facing in society as a whole is causing them to have to think and be cognitive, ask questions cognitively. And so then I think in the classroom settings, everybody in the world, we've all had to switch over and get online. And this generation was already so adept at that you know, with Snapchat and, and you know, uh, Discord, and, and they're already talking to each other constantly online or through their phone devices or, you know, their screens. Some kids are super confident and they know exactly what they want in life and they know how to talk to, to adults or to their peers and express themselves. But not everybody is like that. Sometimes people have, some of the most creative people are introverts. I mean, artists, a lot of us are introverts. And I do, I do feel like the students that are introverted, it's harder for me to find the way in that I would have been able to find in person. So that's a truth. Hmm. Then as a parent of a child who is also doing the camps, I can say that it's ab absolutely been a lifeline. And I think that if we hadn't had this over the summer, I feel like we this summer would have been a lot more difficult. Um, I think that it's kept her engaged and linked, looped into uh, a social network. Um, I don't know if I can emphasize enough how important it's been for her and then for us as a family uh, to keep connection uh, to the outer world and to also feel like you're like doing something valuable.